This is KGW News at Sunrise. In Washington's new top two primary, early results coming in showing a Democrat and a Republican will be on the ballot in the third congressional district. The latest results on that race and an update on the other key races in the state coming up. And we're watching a new brush fire burning in Wasco County. Look at this video from last night from the sheriff's office. Officials say this Dodge Miller fire is over a thousand acres now and it prompted evacuation orders near Moppin. Coming up where people can go if they need shelter. Plus. We come together with the community to make sure that every student has the supplies they need to learn and be successful in the classroom. It is another story showing just how critical the KGW school supply drive is for schools and communities throughout the state. Coming up, more on the key role that one nonprofit has in getting supplies to those who really need it. Lots to talk about this morning, but we want to say good Wednesday. It's August 3rd, and boy, that forecast continues to just cool down degree yeah. by degree. Yeah, <laughs> that's exactly what we're doing. Yesterday, 88, today, yep. 86. Degree. How'd you do that? Degree <laughs> by degree. Walking you through Here it. Here we go. <laughs> uh, pretty good day coming up, though. By the way, the radar is completely clean, meaning no precipitation anywhere in our state right now. The last couple of mornings, we've had thunderstorm activity down in southern Oregon. That's fizzled out. 62 currently, 75 at noon. And then today's high getting up to 86 and that's your Wednesday. Rob, thank you much. Well, we start at five with the latest numbers in the race for Washington's third congressional district. Preliminary results showing Democrat Marie Glusenkamp Perez in the lead with 32% of the vote. Incumbent Republican Jamie Herrera Butler sits in the number two spot with 24% of the vote. Catherine Cook brings us the update from election headquarters in Vancouver. Elections officials tell us this was the race that drew out voters in Clark County. It's also important to remember that these results are preliminary as votes are still being counted. But at this point, it appears that come November, it will be a Republican and a Democrat vying for Washington's third congressional district. And then there were two. Preliminary results from Washington's primary have Democrat Marie Glusenkamp Perez and Republican Jamie Herrera Butler moving on in the race for Washington's third congressional district. Perez was in the lead with the first votes counted Tuesday night. What a relief to see that voters are showing up. They are not falling for these big money lies that are coming through. Um, they are showing up for election integrity. They are showing up for women's rights. And they are showing up for small business owners working in the trades like me. Incumbent Jamie Herrera Butler is in second in her push for a seventh term. She spent Tuesday afternoon waving signs, hoping for last minute support. I've been able to put the needs of folks here first. Even when I've had presidents call me and say, we want you to vote this way, or party leaders lean on me and say, you gotta do this. I always come back to know the folks in this district are my boss. And none of the candidates running can say that. It's gonna be a spicy general election. We asked political strategist Rebecca Tweed to weigh in on the results as they may play out in November. We're really going to be seeing who runs the most to the middle. And I think the national narrative will play a big role in what happens, right? With having a primary in August and a general, you know, just a couple months away, there's no wiggle room. There's no way to walk things back. We have serious issues like choice issues on the ballot, gun issues. A lot of those are going to have an immediate impact. Uh, and Herrera Butler, you know, is going to have to run a little bit progressive if she wants to take Perez. The Washington primary attracted a huge voter turnout in Clark County. Auditor Greg Kimsey estimated 40 to 45 percent. That's about 15 percent more than most primaries. It's fantastic to see people engage in the process. He says without a doubt, the third congressional district race drew the added interest. Voter Ali Smith noticed the uptick, too. I'm not sure what it is. I'm hoping that people are just more passionate about democracy. And that's what it's all about. Now, rounding out the top four vote getters in this race are Joe Kent and Heidi St. John. Those Republicans are in third and fourth place right now. Reporting in Vancouver, I'm Catherine Cook for KGW News at Sun. OK, let's take a quick look now at Congressional District 4, which runs north to south through central Washington. You can see Republican Dan Newhouse has a narrow lead with 27 percent of the vote, while Democrat Doug White is close with 26 percent. 
For U.S. Senate, longtime incumbent Patty Murray finished on top. The Associated Press projecting she will face Republican challenger Tiffany Smiley in November. And in the race for Secretary of State, Democrat Steve Hobbs, who was appointed to the job last fall, has a significant lead. The question seems to be who's going to snag that number two spot, though. Julie Anderson, who's running as a nonpartisan, and Republican Bob Hagland are very close in percentages. And finally, let's head to Clark County, where a sales tax increase for public safety is on the ballot, including buying body cameras for sheriff's deputies. That's known as Proposition 11. Right now, it has a majority of yes votes. You can find all the updated results on races and measures on our website. Just head to kgw.com slash elections. Now to the latest on wildfires, because level two and three evacuation orders are in place right now for areas just west of Maupin in Wasco County due to a brush fire. This is in north central Oregon. Officials have called it the Miller Dodge Fire, and it started around one o'clock yesterday afternoon. And so far, it's burned more than a thousand acres of grass, brush, and juniper. Governor Kate Brown invoking the Emergency Conflagration Act in response that frees up more money and resources to battle the fire. The firefighters that we'll be sending in will be doing some structural protection and really trying to help those communities. The Red Cross opened a shelter at Dufer School just north of the fire area. It has capacity for about 100 people and it'll remain open at least through the morning. Also, when we expect to get an update on the fire and evacuation orders. Officials now saying four people have died in the McKinney fire along the California-Oregon border. Two bodies were found in separate homes in Siskiyou County. The other two were found the day before, overcome by flames while sitting in a car in a driveway. The fire has stayed around 56,000 acres, but at least 100 homes and other buildings have burned. The latest update from Cal Fire says lower temps and rain over some areas did allow crews to make progress and prevent it from growing. We also have an update on a fire that destroyed houseboats and briefly shut down I-84 at a marina in the Dalles. Officials say five houseboats were destroyed, six were damaged, and 11 were saved. About 60 firefighters were there Monday evening when this fire broke out, finally getting it under control around 4 o'clock yesterday morning. The fire chief of Mid-Columbia Fire and Rescue tells us because of dry conditions on the ground, there were fears the fire would spread. Uh, we did uh, end up with a fire to the east of us. Uh, we had embers that, that uh, landed in some uh, juniper bushes over on the freeway uh, down beyond us here. Um, and so it, it basically threatened traffic on the freeway. We had to make sure that we got that knocked down. One firefighter suffered heat exhaustion and was taken to the hospital. No word yet how this fire started. Okay, we are taking you outside now, taking a live look from the Tillicum Bridge. Oh, what a beautiful shot there this morning. Thank you so much for joining us. You can see, is that Mount St. Helens in the yeah. background or is that a cloud? I can't, I'm like trying to <laughs> see. Mount Tabor, here. yeah. Okay, yeah. Mount St. Helens in the background. A beautiful Wednesday morning. And again, thanks for waking up with us. The cables look like a mountain, actually. I, like actually, the mountain peak to the right and St. I, I was Helens. going to say the angle of those cables is, <laughs> <laughs> it is. It looks like it, yeah. Anyway, beautiful morning out there. Cooler for sure. And that's a good thing. <laughs> you got the giggles. Okay, right after the news meet, we're going to go draw mountains and discuss what they look like. <laughs> <laughs> the shape of a mountain. What are you saying? <laughs> okay. Here's a look at our... <laughs> oh, you guys cracked me up, which is good. I'm kind of sleepy this morning. I need some humor. All right. Red flag warnings up for much of central eastern Oregon, up through the Columbia Basin into Washington. The flag warnings up today for high fire danger for the potential of lightning activity. Right now, our radar is completely dry. Uh, meaning no precipitation anywhere and the chance of scattered lightning strikes uh, probably spotty later today, but that's your your fire uh, weather warning area. Again, the PM thunderstorm chance is the main reason it's been issued. Temperatures in those areas on average today, 90 to 95. There will be west winds set up in the Columbia River Gorge today again and this afternoon gusting in the Hood River Valley out toward the Dalles to about 30 miles per hour from the west. Here are the early morning numbers. Again, we're quiet in most areas. Uh, we'll be starting off with sunshine, including Portland and Salem. 62 in the Rose City right now. 61 over in Bend. Over at the coast, it's kind of a mixed bag of some 
cloudiness. Uh, 58 degrees is the number up in Astoria. Okay, so forecast numbers for today. Not too bad. These are pretty much normal for this time of year. 86 Salem. Yesterday it was 92 for you folks. So you'll notice that not being as toasty. Uh, winds light southwest 5 to 15. Corvallis only about 81 expected today. And then you get up in the southwest Washington, Longview, Kelso. And a reminder, you folks, you know, good for you. You escaped the heat wave of last week and today only 77 expected battleground 85 Vancouver getting up to around 86 degrees for high temperature again winds on the light side looks like we're going to have sunshine all day long a uh, little push of cooler weather should bring some solid cloudy uh, with it tomorrow morning so Thursday morning cloudy uh, one of those days where it's not certain how much or when we develop the sun. If it's later in the day, we may not make it to 80. So that's definitely going to be the coolest day we've seen in a while. And that's back to mostly sunny and 85 on Friday. And right now the weekend still goes hot. 92, 96 on Sunday, 93 on Monday. And then some forecast models do continue uh, Tuesday with 90 degree heat. The one that I'm trusting right now shows a bit of a cool down to 86. And that's your forecast. Woo, it's coming back. All right, Rod, thank you.